Hello and welcome to the demonstrational video on the brand new 2022 Chasson 650 Titanium Premium. There's some subtle deviations on the 2022 model from the previous 2021 model so we wanted to uh, point those out. Uh, the main one on the outside is the black alloy wheels. As you can see this is on the uh, Ford which is the 170 brake horsepower automatic in the titanium premium specification. So we'll work our way around the outside and then we'll move on to the inside controls. So the, um, they're being fitted with an awning and a solar panel as standard. There is a separate video on our YouTube channel to show you the operation of the awning. Uh, that's a wind out sun canopy style awning. Uh, so we've got the main habitation door um, that is locked from the central locking system uh, on the key fob um, just be careful with that because it will lock if you don't come out of the driver's door um, so all the, all the doors will lock after a period of time unless you come out of the driver's door so just be aware if you're leaving keys in there the next thing to mention as we work along is the fridge vents so that's um, ventilation for the fridge what it does is it drew, draws cool air in at the bottom and expels it at the top above that you've got the awning light and um, which is controlled from inside uh, this hatch here is for the external gas supply and uh, so if you're using a gas barbecue outside that's where you would draw gas from uh, from the bottle um, that's uh, around the other side. Next one along is the toilet cassette. So this is where the toilet waste is collected. To empty this, draw the hatch open and pull out the cassette. You do that by lifting up this handle and then sliding the cassette out. <clears throat> In theory then this would be full of toilet waste. In order to empty it, draw that nozzle to the front, unscrew the cap, and then turn the cassette upside down and pour the toilet waste away. As you're doing so, press this button in here and that will let air in as the liquid is flowing out of the other end. Uh, that stops it from glugging um, and keeps things neat for when you're disposing of the toilet waste. This takes a toilet chemical. Um, so you, to fill that, you slide this panel back, open up this hatch here and put just a little bit of water in the bottom as is here now from when they tested it and put the desired amount of toilet chemical into this area here. This cassette can be wheeled to the disposal point um, as it's got wheels, you can see there and then it's got an extendable handle that's pulled up like so. Once it's been emptied to put this back in click this handle back past its retention clips there Put the nozzle back in and then slide it back into its housing. Just to ensure that the handle is in its retained position like that. And there's a corresponding uh, uh, valve on the inside on the toilet cassette which I'll show you inside. Uh, you must make sure that that's closed in order to get that cassette out but we'll we'll come to that when we go inside above the toilet cassette is this little retainer here which corresponds onto this latch so for the garage door that's what keeps the garage door locked and uh, to guard against it um, the wind catching hold of the door so here you've got your storage garage um, in here uh, there is various implements that are required for the operation of the inside of the vehicle but uh, i'll run through those in a second we've got a sliding hatch here that will allow you to gain access from inside the vehicle into your storage compartment into your garage um, you've got the cushions that are required to make up the lower bed you've got a bed ladder the carpets are coiled up there we have the cab carpets and um, we have got various things like a fire extinguisher smoke alarm um, the puncture repair kit and the instruction manuals but we'll run through those a bit in a bit more detail on the day of collection there's a light in here uh, you need that switched on on the inside on, on the control panel for that to operate and we've also got 
of a 12 volt supply uh, and also a mains 240 volt supply should you wish to operate a mains appliance outside the vehicle. When closing the catches and on all of the exterior lockers on the garage, uh, you close the door too and then it requires a further push on these handles and then that you can lock the door and they will be fully secure. So to open them, it's a click on both of those and it'll open up and close the door and then you've got to push them in with one further press. Round the back of the vehicle we have uh, two rails should you wish to fit an optional bike rack. Uh, above that is the um, camera, the reversing camera, so it's mounted on uh, the uh, reverse brake light. Uh, so the reverse camera is mounted on the brake light, the top brake light there. That is a vent for the boiler. If you're operating the boiler, uh, the hot water boiler on gas, then that must be removed. In order to do that, you just unclick this at the bottom and that allows the boiler to vent correctly when it's operating on gas. To put that back on, it's got two little notches at the top there. You just slide that onto the top and then press it in at the bottom like that. This side of the garage storage compartment, we have, it's just access through to the uh, other side of the garage. On this model, the boiler is actually mounted behind a removable panel there, um, but there is a, a drain valve here uh, in this removable behind this removable plinth. Um, this is for the boiler. So in winter uh, and in freezing conditions, whenever you're not using the vehicle, you must drain all the water from the boiler. Um, what it does is it gets rid of all the excess water from these pipes here that are feeding the boiler. And the valve is this here so that is in the open position that is in the closed position so that will retain all the water unless it's in that position then the boiler is unusable because it's it'll just drain all the water out of the boiler so that is open and in the storage or winterized position uh, and in the horizontal position either way um, then that is closed and the, uh, the boiler is then usable so I'll leave it in the open position for now and then this panel just goes back on on the velcro strips that you can see there. So that's the panel back on there. As I say there's various things in here uh, that are required for using the vehicle. So we have a, a mains cable, uh, some cargo nets for the bed when the, the um, electric drop down bed is in its down position. They can be put on there to stop people rolling out of the bed, particularly useful for children. This is an external shower uh, point, which I'll come to you. I'll, I'll come to in a second. Uh, so, if you, particularly dog owners, tend to uh, like that option because they can shower off a, a dog after it's been on a walk. Uh, so that goes into the external fitting, which I'll show you. Just with that little nozzle there, you can see. You'll be able to see when I show you on the outside. Again, we've got a retaining catch here for the door once the door is open. That little tab there fits into uh, this section here. So this is where that external shower goes into. You can see there's a little cut out there where that um, sort of bayonet fitting clicks into there. Uh, and then to release it, this collar here, you just, when, when you put the shower head in, this collar, probably just see there, comes forward. And then to release it, you just push that collar back and that releases the shower head. This is the service locker. Um, so in here, we have a point where you fill up the water tank with water. And to do so, you slide this out, unscrew this cap here and fill up the uh, tank by just putting a, ho a hose pipe into there and filling it and, until it pours out. So it's filling this tank here, which is the main water tank for the motorhome. Once it's full, you can just slide that back across. Here we have um, this little lever here will allow you to drain the water down to a certain point uh, so that you're not carrying excess water. Um, so it's displayed on here, the mini level 
and we'll give you 20 litres so that's in the mini level um, and so it'll only allow you to fill it up to 20 litres uh, sorry the mini level is in the up position the maxi level is in the lower position like that so that will allow you to fill the tank full to the top um, and then that drains it down to 20 litres so that you're not carrying excess water and therefore excess weight just tucked away in here is a little bung that goes onto the end of a pipe which is underneath the motorhome that allows you to fully drain this tank down uh, for winter use uh, you mustn't leave water in here uh, if you leave water in there and it's winter and it freezes it can expand it will crack the, the pipe uh, and also the tank is in danger of cracking so you must drain it down and to do so uh, you pull this bung off the pipe uh, which is just underneath the motor which I'll show you in just one second next to that we have the um, circuit breaker the main circuit breaker so that's a, like a domestic circuit breaker that you would have in your home uh, this is for when you're plugged into mains electric and all those tabs must be in the up position as they are here so all those tabs must be in the upper position you can test that this circuit breaker is working when you're plugged into mains press that test button there and that tab will flick down showing you that the uh, circuit breaker is operational next to that you have the charger unit and the 12 volt fuses so there'll be an individual fuse there and they are marked up so you'll have one for the water pump the light circuit uh, the external light circuit etc etc but they are marked up and shown in the manual and that's the service locker closed up so this little bung here goes on to um, a hose which is underneath the motorhome here which is this one just here uh, so that is just a push fit and it goes onto the end of that hose and when you pull that off it completely drains the fresh water tank down while we're underneath the vehicle just next to that is the exhaust for the diesel heater so this uses diesel to heat the motorhome and the exhaust for that is this pipe just here um, so if you see smoke coming from that then it is just the exhaust from the diesel heater so that's worth noting the wastewater drain uh, is just around this side of the motorhome uh, and located just here so it's marked up on the side of the motorhome via this symbol here and to drain that down you pull this lever here and so you, if you pull that out it opens the waste tank you push it back in that closes it and then the waste is released from that tube which is just off the bottom of that tank there so if you are uh, driving over a grid on the sites um, they usually have like a cattle grid where you drain down your wastewater tank then if you line up this sticker here at the back of your rear wheel arch then you know that you're pretty much aligned with where the waste disposal point is for the wastewater both the fresh and the wastewater will have an indication on the main control panel inside the motorhome uh, which I'll show you how to operate when we go inside so around the back of the uh, the other side of the motorhome next to the service locker is where the mains uh, cable is connected so you push the mains cable into here to release it you press that down and it will allow you to pull the cable from the side of the motorhome so that's where the main supply goes in next to that is your uh, gas locker uh, so your gas would go into there it doesn't come with a gas bottle it comes with a regulator it also comes with a flexible hose that comes off this regulator and then goes on to the top of your gas bottle and then the gas is switched on via a tap which is on top of the gas bottle itself next to the gas locker we have the fuel filler and so to fill your fuel uh, that is where the diesel goes in underneath that you've got your add blue additive uh, so that's filled in by unscrewing that cap and on the filling stations now they've got the uh, pumps which are very similar to the fuel filler pumps the add blue will actually 
um, when that is required, when add blue is required, it comes up on your dash and actually gives you a countdown to how many miles you've got before uh, the add blue is required. So that's your fuel filling section. On the cab doors, you've got blinds, which uh, are blackout blinds. So to operate those, you pinch these two together, pull this across, and it's got a magnetic strip which um, joins the edge of this blackout blind to the blind cassette. That is the same on the cab on the front. So you pinch those together and then draw this blind across. As you can see, it's got a section there that draws up to where the rear view mirror is. And then there's a magnetic strip across this section here, which corresponds to the other side. So moving on to the inside of the motorhome now, the main control panel is just here. Uh, so to switch the motorhome on, essentially, it's this button here. Uh, and then that operates the lights, this button here. So you won't get the lights on without that on. Um, the lights themselves are actually switched individually. So you can see various lights around the motorhome have come on. Now I've switched that, those individual switches on. You must have this button switched on here in order for the vehicle to charge. You won't get the charger working without this button switched on, this blue one here. Similarly, the bed operation, you won't get that operational until this is switched on. Even though you may assume from that button that it will all operate, you must have that switched on as well. That button there is for the water pump. You won't get the water coming from your tank unless that is switched on. So that switches the pump on and that's your external light. So your are in light outside. This button here tells you about your battery condition for the habitation. This one here tells you about your battery condition for the cab. This one here tells you about your water levels. Uh, the waste water um, uh, indication is there. So if there's no water in the waste, then that comes on to, to warn you of that. When you first come to use your motorhome, if you switch your pump on and you've filled up the water tank outside, you must purge the air out of the system. So you must switch on the water pump and then open up the tap on both hot and cold. So do it on cold first. Wait until you get a pure flow of water coming out of this tap and then turn it over to the hot side and do exactly the same. Uh, until you get the a pure flow of water coming out of here uh, then your pipes and your boiler will all be full of air instead of water so you don't switch on your boiler until you've firstly purged the air out of the uh, plumbing system on this control panel there's a quick check to tell you whether you're plugged into the main supply there's a little led that will come on there next to the symbol of the uh, plug to show you that you're plugged into the main supply and the control panel is receiving 240 volts. Next to the main control panel then, we've got the heater control, which differs from the 2021 model in that it's a digital display. To control this, basically, uh, this on off button here, um, if it is white, it is basically off. Um, green is on, and then once you've pressed and you've got onto the green section, the, this will allow you to then alter your temperature. So if we said we want 22 degrees, click the middle button and then that's set at 22 degrees. To go back into the main menu, press the button again and th this will then allow you to select the fan speed. So you've got normal, boost or eco. Again, if we went back, You can just ventilate the motorhome without any uh, heat. So you've got level one, level two, and level three uh, of fan speed. And then you've got a heat uh, timer setting. If you want to set the time to come on, at, you know, come on at a certain time, uh, run for a certain length of time, etc. Um, so that's off. In the green color, it's on and will be heating at 21 degrees. If it's just on the ventilation setting, then this will turn blue. 
So we've just got ventilation there. To turn it off, just go to the main control panel and wait till it goes white. So that's off now at the moment. So working around the motorhome then uh, on the inside, this locker here has got the uh, regulator for the solar panel which is housed there. This customer has opted to have a television aerial fitted which is just here. For those that do have an aerial fitted, if you unscrew this cap here, push this arm up through the roof, it, um, you can probably just see the aerial moving there through the skylight. Uh, it allows you to adjust the position of the aerial. Um, just make sure that's down before you move off otherwise you'll be catching low hanging trees so that's that's the aerial that's not standard equipment the customers had that fitted uh, the television bracket is here again the television is standard the, the, the owner of this vehicle has uh, asked us to fit a television to get that out you push that button in there slide this out and it will allow you to adjust the position of the television should you have opted to have one fitted uh, if you pull this little tab down here, it'll allow you to swing this television out and round and adjust it so that it's it's facing in different directions. So it's a sort of omnidirectional television bracket. To put that back in, you just push it back in. Underneath that, we've got the fridge. So this is what's known as a three-way fridge. To switch this on, press and hold the button there, and then it'll allow you to go through uh, the various controls for this. So, if you press this button here, it'll allow you to scroll through which um, power supply you uh, want to run the fridge on. So you've got three options. You've got mains electric, which is that symbol there, uh, obviously when you're plugged into mains. The battery symbol is a 12 volt, which will run off the engine. So that's just for transit cooling. It will only operate while the engine is running. The next one is gas. So if you're off grid and you're not plugged into mains and the engine isn't running, then that's the symbol that you would use. You can also have it on A, which is automatic. So the fridge will actually select the most relevant power source. Uh, it will look for mains electric first. Then it'll try and find gas, and then it'll try and find uh, the engine alternator on 12 volt. So that will allow you to not have to worry about um, switching over the power supply. So in most cases, leave it on auto. This is the temperature selection here. Uh, so select the, the temperature which is relevant to the ambient temperature outside. If it's really hot, then you want the fridge to work harder, have it at the higher setting. If it's really cold, then you don't want the fridge to work that hard. Uh, have it at a lower setting, otherwise it will it will freeze up. So this symbol here is showing you uh, what temperature it's set at. Uh, the fridge at the moment, we haven't got any gas. The engine isn't running and we're not plugged in. So it's gone to fail, which is this symbol here. Um, if that starts showing, then it's lost all supply, all power supply. So um, switch it off and then switch it back on again. You might need to wait a couple of seconds for the gas to come through the pipe work uh, if you're running it on gas. So that's the fridge controls. Um, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna leave the fridge empty for any length of time, just pull out these little tabs here and click them into the catch there and what it does is it allows the fridge to breathe it lets it, it, it vents the fridge if you leave the fridge closed uh, you get stagnant air building up in the fridge and it can start to smell so that's what those little catches are for there so moving on along and um, the uh, this little switch here is for the lights in the bathroom uh, it's tucked away there so some people struggle with the position of that but that's that's where it is so that's how you switch your lights on the toilet uh, is connected to that cassette which I showed you outside. Uh, so the cassette actually slides into this here and the flush button is this here. Uh, you've got to have the water pump switched on for that to work. So the way to use the toilet is obviously lift the lid and this little handle here opens and closes the blade which I showed you on the toilet cassette. So that must be closed in order to get the cassette from outside uh, in the locker that's outside. Uh, 
So uh, open up the blade, use the toilet, and then that's the flush for it. When the cassette's full, there's a little light that illuminates to tell you that the cassette needs emptying. In this area here, we've got the uh, slide across access through into your garage storage, so you don't need to go outside. Uh, you can open that up and you've got access to your storage. You've got your wardrobe in here. Um, with drawers that pull out from either side. And then hanging space up above. The shower's got a wooden duct board. I would take that out if you're going to use it um, for showering. It just protects, uh, it's there to protect the, the shower tray basically, if things drop on it. Um, shower head, it's fairly straightforward, it's just a single lever tap. Um, left and right for hot and cold, lift it up for, um, to let the water supply through. We've got a hanging rail in here for wet clothes. If you want to hang up coats, if you've been outside, then obviously they can drip into the shower tray and they're not causing the interior to get wet in the motorhome. The skylight here, uh, you've got to clip these back these little knobs here, you can see there, unlock. So push those back and then unscrew this handle here and that'll allow the uh, roof light to, to open up. And these have got fly screens on. You just pull those together and that'll allow you to pull the fly screen across. It's also got a blind on it that operates in exactly the same way. And they just clip closed like so. So next to the shower, we've got a cupboard here. Um, they're the controls for the boiler. So uh, what happens here is we've got the electric. So it's one kilowatt in the upper position if you want to heat your water on electric. Off in the middle, two kilowatts on the lower position. So you can see there, that's, the, that's if you're heating your water on electric. If you're off grid and you want to heat it on gas, you must take off the cowl, which I showed you on the back panel. And then you've got 50 degrees off in the middle or 70 degrees and um, if the gas is if you've only just connected the gas up you may need to uh, switch this on and off two or three times you can see there it's gone to fail that will happen if the uh, gas boiler hasn't got its gas a pure flow of gas supply so that can happen if you've only just connected up your gas so you may need to switch that off and then start it going again if you've just put your gas on um, and then that will so it's drawing through the gas getting rid of the air in the pipes obviously it won't light now because we've got no gas connected but if that red you, you, you must make sure that that red light doesn't appear otherwise the water isn't being heated just show you the blinds on this so to operate the blinds you pull these two together uh, they can be positioned I think there's two or three positions before they close together. And then the upper section of this blind is a fly screen. So if you pull that down then you can just see that this is, so you can pull that right down and then that's a fly screen. If the window's open, you wanna prevent insects from coming in. To release the fly screen from the blind, you pinch those two together and that re reveals your window. The um, oven and hob, this, this is an electric ring, so if that if you're going to use this to heat food, make sure it cools down before you bring the glass lid down, otherwise that'll radiate heat onto the glass lid and it can shatter. Underneath here, we have the controls for the bed and the table. In order to get those operational, as I said, you must have the blue light on the control panel. And then there's a safety override switch just up here, which has got the key in it. Uh, so in the operation, that's off in the operational position. It's in that position there. So to get the bed down from the roof, uh, it's these two buttons here. So I'll just show you. So that's the bed halfway down. If you if you're going to use it as a four berth, bring the bed halfway down and then make up the bed underneath, which I'll show you in a second. And the table control is just this one here. So if you're going to bring the bed all the way down, so 
that's the bed in the uh, sorry that's the table in the lower position if you're going to bring the bed all the way down to the lower position remove the scatter cushions so that the bed can come all the way down and it sits basically on top of these um sit off on top of the seating area here so i've removed the scatter, scatter cushions and bring the bed all the way down So that's the bed in the lowest position so to make the lower bed position the table so that it's like facing this way pull out the support arm open up the table the table uh, then bridges the gap between the, the seating area here so I'll draw the table down by pressing the button which then bridges the gap between the seating area and then there's additional cushions which sit on top of there and also an additional cushion which sits in here which is in the garage i'll get those and make that up and just uh, uh, take a picture of that so when the bed is made up that's how it looks uh, these two little legs here uh, come off these cushions uh, so those legs are attached to the cushions i'll show you how they come down in just a second but that's uh, how the bed looks when it's made up these additional cushions here so you can see it's got a little arrow in order to get those legs to fold down you just push that way and then they fold down like so so just at the front here next to the table um, is where the seat belted seats fold down from if you so if you remove the base cushions from the uh, seating area there's a handle here if you just turn that and then lift up this section here it allows you to lift up the um, belted seat area so you can see there I put the cushions back in with one in the backrest position and so that's how your seat belts operate and the reception and then the, you, the end of the seatbelt goes into there so that's exactly the same on this side as well and so lift off the base cushions and then turn that little handle and that allows you to lift up the backrest for the seat belted seat just here where the um key is for the operation of the bed if you take this cover off here it reveals the motor so if your battery goes flat or one of the fuses blows or you get into trouble with the bed in the lower position there's a little handle in the pack which goes onto the top of the motor which will allow you to draw the bed up um, manually rather than on the motor uh, so that's the reason for that cover coming off and uh, we'll point we'll, we'll always point out where that handle is uh, on collection of any new motor so that concludes the demonstration. We look forward to seeing you when you collect your new motorhome. If you've got any questions, I'll be happy to answer those on the day or in the interim between now and you collecting your new motorhome.